Scripture and Prophecy. I'm your host, Sean Osmond, and the website is www.scriptureandprophecy.com. Today is Tuesday, September 26, 2017, and we are reading Bereshit, Genesis chapter 12 and 13 today. And uh, when we left off, uh, when we stop to uh, give the Torah Parsha a test and see how that works out, uh, we had we had went uh, we'd stopped at chapter eleven. Uh, so chapter ten was when Nimrod, the mighty one, came on the scene. Chapter eleven was about the Tower of Babel and the fall, and then it kind of ended with talking about Abram's father Terah, giving a little genealogy, and and ended with them leaving their homeland. <clears throat> and so here we are, uh, ready for chapter 12, and for the next foreseeable few chapters, we're going to be talking about Abram. And, uh, you know, something interesting to note is Abram, who ends up being the father of the Hebrews. I don't like it when people say father of the Jews, because it was 12 tribes that came out of Jacob, uh, Judah, the Jews, being one of the 12 tribes. And uh, this is something that really just irritates me for some reason. Because I'm always, whenever I hear prophecy teachers or refer to Israel or refer to Abraham, they always say "Father of the Jews" or the you know the Jews returning to Israel. It's not just the Jews. There's 11 other tribes, and so you probably hear me go on that tangent often. Abraham was Abram. It's what his name is currently, as we're in the story. His He's the father of the Hebrews, and which is interesting about that, because we're always talking about how names mean something, and words in Hebrew mean something. And Abram, the first two letters of his name are Aleph and Bet. And Aleph Bet spell Ab, Abba, which means father. And so isn't it interesting that Abram, his name would you know, the first part of his name actually means father, and he is the father of the Hebrews. Um, just think that's interesting, and for some of you that may not be interesting, but for people like me it is interesting, so I thought I would point that out. All right, so we're ready. We're going to read chapter 12 and 13 because they're both kind of short, and we're going to deal with some decisions Abraham makes and some decisions his nephew Lot makes, and we'll talk about that as we go. All right, let's do what we came here to do. Bereshit, Genesis, chapter 12. Hashem said, I have to point this out, or be, I'll remind you, we're reading from what's called the Art Scroll Tanakh, which is basically the Old Testament, uh, but this particular one is a Hebrew-English hybrid uh, parallel. And it's really meant for, for the Jewish community. But I thought it would be interesting to read the Tanakh from that perspective in addition to our perspective that Yeshua, Jesus, is the Messiah. Uh, so you're going to see the word Hashem often. It's the same as when you're reading the King James Bible when it says the Lord. Both are in the place of yod heh vav heh Yahovah. Um, I don't, you know, there's a laundry list of reasons why Lord was put into the English versions. And then the reason for Hashem uh, in the Jewish versions is simply because they think it's disrespectful to say the name, the, the Father's name. So they say Hashem, which means the name. We say the Lord. Um, and uh, there's a laundry list of reasons uh, we're not going to get into today, but I just wanted to... Uh, uh, point that out. So when you hear the word Hashem, it's the same as saying the Lord in the King James, or just simply saying God's name, Yahovah. Now let's begin. Hashem said to Abram, Go for yourself from your land, from your relatives, and from your father's house to the land that I will show you, and I will make of you a great nation. I will bless you and make your name great and you shall be a blessing and I will bless those who bless you and him who curses you I will curse and all the families of the earth shall bless themselves by you so Abram went as Hashem had spoken to him 
and Lot went with him. Abram was 75 years old when he left Haran. Abram took his wife Sarai and Lot, his brother's son, and all their wealth that they had amassed, and the souls they made in Haran, and they left to go to the land of Canaan. And they came to the land of Canaan. Abram passed into the land as far as the site of Shechem until the plain of Moray. The Canaanites was in the land. Hashem appeared to Abram and said, To your offspring I will give this land. So he built an altar there to Hashem who appeared to him. From there he relocated to the mountain east of Bethel and pitched his tent, with Baal on the west and Ai on the east. And he built there an altar to Hashem and invoked Hashem by name. In other words, he called on Yohavah, Yahavah. Of course, we don't know exactly how it was pronounced. Then Abram journeyed on, journeying steadily toward the south. There was a famine in the land, and Abram descended to Egypt to sojourn there, for the famine was severe in the land. Now, one thing that's interesting to point out, and the commentator points this out as well, is Abraham goes to the land that God shows him, and God tells him this is going to be the land for you and for your people, and a great nation is going to come out of you, and you're going to be blessed, and anyone who blesses you will be blessed in return. Anyone who curses you, I'm going to curse. And then there comes a famine on the very land that was promised to Abraham, forcing Abraham out of this area to go to Egypt. Why would God do this? And the commentator makes an interesting note that it's, you know, because the scriptures say that these things come, these troubles, these trials, they come as a way to test your faith so that you will be better off after you have been tested and tried so that you will be a person of more faith so that you'll be even closer to God so you understand God and understand God's ways even more. And the commentator makes this, makes this uh, uh, reference. He says, This is another test of Abram's faith. Immediately after he settled in the new homeland where God had promised him every manner of blessing, there was a famine, whereupon God commanded him to leave for the land of Egypt. Interesting. Something that I, I just... You know, think is worth thinking about. You know, we, there's so many things that goes on in the scriptures, and we just overlook them. You know, here's the land; it's promised to Abram, and then immediately there's a famine forcing him out of it. That you know, I think that deserves one's attention. Let's let's start with verse ten again. There was a famine in the land, and Abram descended to Egypt to sojourn there, for the famine was severe in the land. And it occurred as he was about to enter Egypt, and he said to his wife Sarai, See now, I have known that you are a woman of beautiful appearance. And it shall occur when the Egyptians will see you, they will say, This is his wife. Then they will kill me, but you they will let live. Please say that you are my sister, that it may be well with me. Now many people will say, Well, look, Abraham's a liar. Well, not really. Well, not really. He did withhold information, uh, but Sarai was his half-sister. For your sake, and that, they, that I may live on account of you. But it occurred with Abram's coming to Egypt that the Egyptians saw that the woman was very beautiful. When the officials of Pharaoh saw her, they lauded her for Pharaoh. And the woman was taken to Pharaoh's house. And he treated Abraham well for her sake. And he acquired sheep and cattle and donkeys and slaves and maidservants, female donkeys and camels. Verse 17. But Hashem afflicted Pharaoh along with his household with severe plagues because of the man matter of Sarai, the wife of Abram. Pharaoh summoned Abram and said, What is this you have done to me? Why did you not tell me she is your wife? Why did you say she is my sister? So that I would take her as my wife. Now here is your wife. Take her and go. So Pharaoh gave men orders concerning him, and they escorted him and his wife and all that was his. 
chapter 13. So Abram went up from Egypt, he with his wife, and all that was his, and Lot with him to the south. Now Abram was very laden with livestock, silver, and gold. He proceeded on his journey from the south of Bethel to the place where his tent had been at first, between Bethel and Ai, to the site of the altar which he had erected there at first, and Abram invoked Hashem by name. So now that the famine is over, and Pharaoh sent Abram out with all kinds of more wealth, um, because God is just blessing Ab- Abram in, in, in ways that are unfathomable. And Abram ends up right back where he was, uh, where he had set up the altar, and now he's calling on the name of Yahovah. And here's what happens. Verse 5, Also Lot, who went with Abram, had flocks, cattle, and tents. And the land could not support them dwelling together, for their possessions were abundant, and they were unable to dwell together. And there was quarreling between the herdsmen of Abram's livestock and the herdsmen of Lot's livestock. And the Canaanite and the Prezerites were then dwelling in the land. He keeps pointing that out to us. That's interesting. He keeps wanting us to know that the Canaanites and the Pezerites were dwelling in the land, which I happen to think uh, could potentially have been Nephilim. We're going to continue on. Verse 8. So Abram said to Lot, Please let there be no strife between me and you and between my herdsmen and your herdsmen, for we are kinsmen. Is not all the land before you? Please separate from me. If you go left, I will go right. And if you go right, then I will go left. So Abraham, being unselfish and kind, and probably knowing that God is going to bless him, he lets Lot choose. Lot, look, you've got the whole, all this land is before you. You look, you choose what direction you want to go, and I'll go the opposite direction. Verse 10. So Lot raised his eyes and saw the entire plain of the Jordan, and that it was well watered everywhere. This is before Hashem destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah. Like the garden of Hashem, like the land of Egypt going toward Zor, so Lot chose for himself the whole plain of the Jordan, And Lot journeyed from the east. Thus he parted one from his brother. The commentator says this. He says, Wealth and the lust for more of it brings out the worst in people. Abraham resisted it completely, but Lot allowed it to warp his judgment until, as this succeeding passage indicates, it destroyed nearly all of his family. You see, Lot went for what was pleasing to the eyes. You know, what looked like it would be more wealth and more abundance. And as we're going to read later on in the story of Genesis, it does end up leading to really losing nearly everything. Alright, verse 12. Abram dwelled in the land of Canaan, while Lot, Lot dwelled in the cities of the plain and pitched tents as far as Sodom. Now the people of Sodom were wicked and sinful towards Hashem exceedingly. Hashem said to Abram after Lot had parted from him, Raise now your eyes and look out from where you are, northward, southward, eastward, and westward. For all the land that you see to you will I give it, and to your descendants forever. I will make your offspring as the dust of the earth, so that if one can count the dust of the earth, then your offspring too can be counted. Arise, walk about in the land through its length and breadth, for to you will I give it. And Abram moved his tent, and he came and he dwelled in the plains of Mamre, which are in Hebron, and he built there an altar to Hashem. And that is our reading for today and we'll do chapter 14 lord willing tomorrow and uh if you missed yesterday's podcast we did the prophecy podcast a day uh you know at the beginning of the week instead of the end of the week because here in a couple days we're going to be talking about yom kippur 
And uh, I had mentioned that we uh, we are abandoning, we're ditching uh, the tour of Parsha schedule uh, because I thought things were flowing a lot better, moving a lot better when we were just committing to read the Torah on Monday, Tuesdays, and Wednesdays. So we're back to that, and uh, we're just going to stick with that moving forward. Um, I just think it, it just it just goes smoother. Um, it's something to look forward to. You know, those of you who want to hear the Bible. You know, that's three days straight that I record the podcast at the very least. And uh, so hopefully it's being a blessing to you um, as much as it is a blessing to me. And, uh, you know, we need to know what the Torah says. And so many people just have no idea. And uh, so we'll be in the book of Genesis for a while. um, But I think if we continue to read at the rate that we are and we're covering as much content as we are, we should be able to cover the whole Torah uh, within a year's time. Uh, I'm going to also be throwing in some new covenant readings uh, throughout the weeks. Uh, probably, We'll probably start working through the book of Romans. I uh, probably won't start this week. That'll be something for next week. Uh, so tomorrow we're going to read uh, chapter 14 in the book of Bereshit Genesis as our Torah study. And then Thursday... Uh, we're going to talk about Yom Kippur, which happens to be on this Saturday, the highest holy day of the year, a day to be fe- taken very serious. Uh, right now, we are in what's called the 10 Days of Awe, where we're just uh, contemplating and repenting and just thinking about uh, the Day of Atonement, Yom Kippur, that's coming up. And uh, so we're going to cover a lot of scriptures on that day, uh, some New Testament scriptures as well as some uh, some scriptures in uh, the book of Leviticus. So anyway, I hope that you've been blessed by all this. If you have, I'd love to hear about it. Uh, Don't forget about the website, scriptureandprophecy.com. That's where you can go to support me, my family, and support this mission of truth. Uh, So if that's on your heart, that's where you can go to do that. I'd love to have you as a Patreon subscriber. You can subscribe at any monthly amount. All right. Well, Lord willing, I'll be back with you again tomorrow. Peace and grace be with all of you. And until next time, God bless.